Hey Capricorn, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for May 2018 and we've got to talk about this Uranus situation. He is coming into Taurus and this is going to light up your fifth house. So this can look a variety of ways and I'm really going to focus on that during this video. But the first thing that I want to do is just get us into these dates so you can start to see how it's going to piece together a little bit and I'll talk as we go, all right? So right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we've got Mercury coming out of the last part of its shadow time. I think this is important to highlight because it means now that Mercury is not in any kind of funky orbit or anything like that. He's full on. He's straightforward. He's direct. He's giving us his blessings. And this is phenomenal because we've got communication things. We've got decisions that are going to have to be made this month. You've got to be savvy with some decisions that you're making. So you really want your mental planet and the communication planet giving us as full potential as possible. So we are definitely in that timing as of the third. Now on the 12th, Mars, our planet of action, assertion, aggression, movement, energy, conflict, all of those things is actually in the beginning of the shadow time moving towards its retrograde coming in June. This is important to understand as well because your action, your energy, and maybe even your desire for certain things, you may be questioning those things a little bit. You may be slowing down a little bit because that's exactly what Mars is doing. He's still forward. We've still still got these blessings, you've still got the benefit of him, but things will start to slow. So this is important, I think, to act purposefully, right? Be sure of what you're doing. Question what you're doing. Why are you expending energy on that? Why are you doing this? If there's no good reason, start to reevaluate it because you're going to be looking at your action and where you're putting your action at anyway when we get into this retrograde. So Mars is going to be in place for a little bit for you, okay? Now, as we get to the 13th of the month, we really kick into this Taurus energy for you. We've got Mercury over here moving into Taurus. Then on the 15th, we've got the new moon happening in Taurus. At the same time, we've got Uranus coming into Taurus and all of this lights up the fifth house space for you. So let's talk about that. First of all, with this new moon happening in the fifth house, the fifth house is true love. It's romance, it's beginnings, it's conception, it's I'm starting this new um, business, my creative expression, my investments, my joy, my play. Children fall into this house, okay? So you kind of have a rounded idea of what the shakeup is going to be. And the new moon here says, let's plant these new seeds of intention. What do we want here? What do you want this to look like? What is the experience? What's the new you'd like to bring to this? And for some of you, this area has needed some new, or it feels like it could just use a little bit of life, right? Now Uranus coming in, Uranus comes to break down structures, right? You're a structured energy and Uranus says these structures aren't working anymore. We need to change and we need to get out of this rut in order to bring some innovation, bring some progress to the table. So I want to talk about what this could look like in your world. Now first and foremost is if you've been in a relationship, this could be phenomenal for you because this could be a new beginning right? Shake it up. Maybe you've been feeling a little bit like you want to try something different. You want to just do something different. It's almost like I kind of feel like it's like, oh, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I want to, you know what I mean? But you can't quite find it. And I think Uranus is great for this in relationships because it can bring some excitement, bring something sudden to a relationship and just bring something new as a whole. Especially if you've got a current romantic partner you're with, this could bring definitely some excitement to the table for you. Now, if you are single AF, right? <laughs> or you're just single, whichever those statuses you are, this could bring someone to your table. This could bring somebody who is way different than you. They could be somebody you maybe never even considered being attracted to and you are really finding the right place. Let me tell you, when Uranus comes into place, we have these energies that happen and it's sudden and it's unexpected. You know, if you've kind of been dating, you could find your yourself suddenly making a commitment and then you're going to have the next seven years to watch this grow, right? What a cool new way to start a new sudden piece of your life, right? I do think for some of you, if you have been kind of casually seeing somebody and you haven't really been sure, this could lead people to, um, to just kind of going away and you don't really know where they went. It could almost, almost be a little bit of ghosting. I will tell you in the fifth house, I do want you to be mindful of, um, any forms of cheating, 
okay? Be mindful that this energy really could usher in a temptation to you. And that's not to say that it's good or bad. It creates what it creates, but I just want you to be mindful of it, okay? Now, the other side of this that I'm really thinking about is that your creativity and your self-expression could go on fleek. You could decide to start a new business. You could be like, I'm going to pick up this hobby where I want to express myself this way, and it's being very well received, and it's very critical for you because it's actually bringing life into your life, right? It could definitely shake up your investments if you've got an investment portfolio, things like that. So be mindful of that. Now, the biggest thing that comes to my mind when I see Uranus over here is what a big deal children and child life things are, right? So you, if you don't want to be pregnant at this time, this is a time where you need to guard against unplanned pregnancy, unwanted pregnancy, any of those kinds of things. This could be a time where you could be having babies, absolutely for sure. And it could be multiple babies because Uranus doesn't ever want to do it by the rules. Now, if you're not in that place in your life, I do want to tell you that this could point to your children, something coming up for them, an event, an unexpected development of some variety. It could be you re-looking at your childhood and going, whoa, I didn't realize that impacted me that way. Or, oh my gosh, I haven't thought about that in a really long time, but it's going to be significant. It's not just like, oh, that was fun when I was five. It will be something that will you will develop over the next seven years, okay? But if you do have children, this is a great time to watch for any developments that could be coming up with them for sure. But what we do know is that this new moon in the fifth house along with Uranus makes this a pretty exciting time for you. Now on the 16th, we've got Mars moving into Aquarius. This actually moves into your second house. So this is phenomenal. Great for sitting on or taking out a talent that you maybe been sitting on, finding a new way to make money with it, looking at your values, looking at your possessions. If you've needed to buy something, this might be a time where you're actually ending up doing that. You could also see some additional funding coming your way um, or an opportunity to make additional money in some way, shape, or form. On the 19th, Venus moves into Cancer where she's very comfortable. This again tackles a little bit of this relationship energy. And I think it's a great time to give some some nurturing to that partnership sector. You know what I mean? You you may really be becoming, be becoming honest in your heart about um, if your needs are being met, if you're able to nurture, if you feel like nurturing this relationship, um, you could really, this could be commitment energy, absolutely for sure. You could decide to take it to another level. But the, the deal is, is that I feel like this, along with the fifth house energy, has a common relationship feel for Capricorn. So I do think, and with Saturn in your sign, you could really be starting to show up to the table much differently. And this could be so extravagant that what it looks like is that the relationships you never thought could actually play out for you start to play out. So it'll be really interesting. You'll have to keep me posted, okay? On the 20th, the sun moves over into Gemini. On the 29th, we've got the full moon happening in Sagittarius in your 12th house, along with Mercury moving into Gemini as well. So the sixth house space... So the sixth house space does become pretty busy. You're going to want to be vital here, looking at routines, your health, uh, maybe some things at work. But this full moon happening here says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. And this is in the most quiet, private sector of your chart. So one of the things I keep thinking of for you, Sagittarius, or excuse me, Capricorn, is that there is something that you need to let go of. There could be an old relationship, an old friendship, an old idea, whatever it is, there's a lot of closure that you're being asked to grant um, at this full moon because they say time heals all wounds and I really believe that's a lie. Time will heal the wounds that you allow it if you will surrender them and so I do feel like this moon is asking you to do that so that you can move forward a lot freer. All right, Capricorns, I look forward to seeing you next month. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and keep me posted on how this plays out for you, okay? Bye.